looking at these margins, it allowed us to look at a very simple um, hydrocarbon system or an exploration place system. And this is captured on this little cartoon here. As we come off the shelf and down into the slope, the sort of plays that we've been looking at and trying to chase on the slope were constrained uh, channel plays where there was some bypass, where there was some way of trapping hydrocarbons in sands on the slope. It's the devil's own job to find it and it has been a very difficult process. There's, we, I think we kind of uh, understood that the Jubilee discovery in Ghana was a, a play of this style and we went looking for more Jubilees. Actually, Jubilee has a... Uh, a faulted crest, so it's actually a structural play, um, not quite like Seabird in Equatorial Guinea, but it, of that style, it's more structural than we thought, not just sedimentological. What we're, what we're going to be looking at in the future, though, is the basin floor fan, fan plays. Now, where the basin floor fan is quite close to the coast, often there's such a thick sediment pile that the source rocks push the source in, that the source rocks are in the gas window, they generate gas. So we find a lot of gas quite close to the shore. But as we go offshore, what we'd expect is that the source rocks are buried to a shallower depth and they're generating oil. So as we go offshore into deeper water, into these basin floor fan plays that are tilting up away from the coast, we're actually going to be looking for oil plays. And uh, Yaka was a, one of the plays of this style um, off uh, Senegal. But actually, uh, after finding uh, gas and uh, a little bit of condensate in Taranga, they drilled Yaka with hoping that we would encounter oil in that play. But actually we found gas and condensate again. And what that's telling us is something that we must always expect and that is the unexpected. As we go offshore, what we'd expect from theoretical reasoning um, is that the geothermal gradient would decrease because oceanic crust has less potassium and uranium in it going to be less thermogenically, uh, radiogenically hot. And so we'd imagine that the geothermal gradient would decrease. Actually, what we're finding as you come offshore Senegal is that the, the geothermal gradient increases so that the source rock at Yaka is still in the gas window. But if we go further, maybe we'll still find oil further outboard um, in, in, uh, in Northwest Africa. Let's look again at some of these uh, contrite systems that we're just starting to get the feel for how, how important they are. This is exam an example from the Sigipe Basin in uh, eastern Brazil. Um, in Sigipe, Petrobras have found perhaps three billion barrels of oil in constrained, uh, very constrained actually, uh, channel plays um, running down the slope. But these are all dominated by contrite systems. On the left-hand side of this dip uh, seismic line, you can see it's cut one of the constrained channels showing where the sands are. And on the right-hand side, you can see the contrite drift um, that this channel is, is cutting against. And the contrite drift has sand waves and, and all the classic uh, uh, phenomena that you'd expect to see of a contrite. So understanding how the interaction between the turbidite constrained channels and the contrite systems work is absolutely critical for understanding what the potential is on the far right of this seismic, which is undrilled in, uh, in open acreage. Uh, and here we're expecting to find large basin floor fans tilting up away from the coast and, uh, and charged in this case with oils such as you find in the other Sagipe discoveries. We look at those Sagipe discoveries, we start to understand how the interaction of these mixed systems works. And that allows us to jump, well, just about anywhere with a very similar sort of contrite dominated uh, sedimentological regime. In this case, I've jumped from the right-hand side from Sagipe into Argentina. This is a new area, just having a license round. And we're seeing there the same constrained channels that are moving because of the flow of contrite currents. These constrained channels are moving up the coast through time. and we can see in a dip sense these large uh, fans. It's one of the characteristics of, uh, of uh, Cretaceous contrite systems is that the, because the contrite is largely made of silt and uh, mudstone, it's pretty low density. Often the sands underneath it, they look hard, but that doesn't actually reflect the uh, uh, reservoir quality. They're just uh, hard, 
hard kick sounds and uh, that perhaps explains why we see quite so many of them in the Cretaceous on the margins of uh, South America. But if we, if we go from Uruguay, where if you remember we started this journey by looking at where the rare well was drilled, which would be on the right hand side of this seismic line, and we come south into Argentina, the green line, the green interpreted line, shows a huge thickness um, of Cretaceous sediments there, a huge Cretaceous del delta. And within the, that system, which sits at the end of the Colorado River uh, system, we see a numerous uh, contrite constrained channels. They're just the same as Sagipe. In fact, there's three times as many by area in Argentina than there are in the Sagipe Basin itself. It's potentially one of the most prolific parts of the planet, and it's totally undrilled. This is the opportunity that we have in front of us. This is where we'll find the big reserves of the future. We can do hydrocarbon systems modeling, which show that the Aptian source rock is present all along that margin. And we can identify that Aptian source rock by uh, looking at some of its seismic character. It's a type four ABO response. It's um, low frequency, has a soft kick at the top and the base. We know exactly where the Aptian is. We can map it out along the coast and it sits right underneath those Cretaceous basin floor fans, which are just so uh, so potential. In Argentina, it's not just the right-hand side of this seismic line that's interesting, the deep water section, but also up on the shelf and, and up the shelf edges up on the, the Ewing Terrace. Uh, Argentina has a lot of potential here. All of it is pretty much unexplored. Um, and what we're doing with modern regional seismic data is coming into an area and allowing geologists to look at and interpret this area for the first time. Never been able to see these structures before so they can start to use their imaginations and creative genius to find the plays and the prospectivity which will be the super basins of the future. Talking of super basin, basins that have already arrived, the future is actually now. Um, here's, here's an example line, a uh, dip line running from the south to the north uh, through the Lisa discovery. And the Lisa discovery offshore Guyana was just one of these basin floor fans that has in the whole complex of Lisa and, and the other discoveries in that trend, you know, perhaps 5 billion barrels of oil discovered uh, in the last three or four years. Now, the key to getting this type of discovery in 2000 meters of water to work is to appraise it quickly and to get it on development quickly so that you shorten the time to first production, you shorten the time to first revenue. And this is something that Exxon have done brilliantly offshore Guyana, getting Lisa towards uh, first production. But they haven't just stopped at focusing on the discovery. They've also drilled structures like this one on the right hand side, which is where there's a volcanic guillot, a volcanic edifice. And on top of that is a carbonate uh, platform unit that is sitting with the source rock all around it. And this was the range of discovery. This is really exciting. Elsewhere on this margin, uh, we're on the southern side. If you look on the southern side of the Amazon, this is a, a, a northwest to southeast line across the Amazon Delta. And on the southeast side of the, of the Delta, we see lots of these guillots with lots of the carbonate buildup sitting right on top. Now, this is a play that has just never been explored before. It's either in inaccessible water depths or it was at uh, too high a risk. But now we're seeing these all along the northern margin of Brazil, uh, where we've had uh, volcanic edifices, carbonate buildup sitting on top of them, surrounded by uh, Kanji's uh, equivalent uh, source rocks to charge them with oil. This is potentially really exciting in the Paramaranyau Basin. A couple more examples here. It's not the only play in the Paramaranyau because there's also a clastics play sitting uh, on top of these uh, buildups, and it's highlighted in red on, on this particular diagram here, where dipping up as you go off offshore, so dipping out to sea, uh, that analog play, which will be the Yakar equivalent analog play, surrounded by uh, Kanji equivalent source rocks, uh, which would be generating oil from, from where they are located on this margin. These plays have just never been looked at before. Now, this particular example, it's in the, over 2,000 meters of water. It's quite drillable. And I think in the future, we'll see the Paramaranyau Basin of northern Brazil as one of the most uh, sought after areas. But we could go anywhere in the world. And that, what I'm showing you now is a seismic line that comes from a margin that until 
uh, about four years ago, nobody had any idea what this margin looked like. This is a line running northwest to southeast of Somalia. And what we can see, the green line here is again the top of the Cretaceous. What we can see in the tertiary is that it's a very unstable margin. And in the Cretaceous, it's a very stable margin. We know where the Cretaceous source drops, they're sitting at the base of that line. And when, uh, when we show this, this line, um, quite often focus uh, is paid to the end of the toe thrust in the tertiary, where the wind jammer equivalent, and then beyond the toe thrust, the Barkley time uh, equivalent of Ravuma uh, type plays are located. But it's actually not the most exciting part of that line, because if you look on the left hand side of the, of the line, there's an interior fold that you can see it's quite a big interior fold. And here it, within the Cretaceous, we can drill in relatively shallow water, a play that has just never been imaged before. This interior uh, series of on echelon folds that are running up the coast of um, Somalia, uh, currently in a license round as it happens. Um, and these will probably be the first, uh, the first plays to, to get explored. As we go further north, that was from the Jubalamu Basin in southern Somalia, go further north to the Obia Basin, um, the margin changes completely. And here we've got a hyperextended margin. Uh, so a, a very different structural style. And, and what we can do now is, is use regional seismic lines all around the world to build up maps of the, the var variation in structure, crustal structure on the world's passive margins, try and understand how that relates to the dynamic topography that we've seen in the mantle convection maps, a whole uh, interesting series of endeavors which is allowing us to focus in on the, the more prospective margins. In this hyperextended margin, actually, we think the, the highest potential is in carbonate buildups again, sitting over the uh, synrift and over the uh, pre-rift uh, structures on this margin, the areas in blue there uh, uh, look pretty clear to us is carbonate buildups, one of them over a thousand square kilometers uh, in extent. So, you know, the potential for finding a Zor type equivalent, or uh, on the left hand side, these are much more localized pinnacle buildup uh, type um, uh, carbonate buildups, but they're both sitting over Jurassic source rock where it's in the ore window. And that's one thing about East Africa is that, you know, even a lot of people look at East Africa and say, well, it's all going to be gas. We're not going to find any oil there. And you just have to look for the parts of the margin where the source rock is not very deep enough or the geothermal gradient is not so high that the source rock is going to be generating gas. In this case, in the Obia Basin in Somalia, we're in the oil window. There's not much you can do about that. You can't actually get it in the gas window. Um, so this Jurassic source rock is generating oil sitting underneath the frosty from these carbonate buildup systems, which I think are some of the most uh, exciting new geologies to, to be seen in the last uh, three or four uh, years around the world. And so we've saved the best till last, really, the Santos Basin of uh, Brazil. And here, as you remember, it's a, a pre-salt play. And what we're looking for is big structures in the pre-salt. Now, everywhere the pre-salt is, is drilled, what we find is thick uh, uh, carbonate units just full of porosity. It's a, a really almost miraculous uh, porosity system. We'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. But uh, on the regional seismic that we acquired, what we were trying to do was to see if there are any other structures like Jupiter, like Tupi, like uh, Luna and the Cabo Frio uh, cluster of structures are there any structures like that as you go further offshore that might be in open acreage? And that's the point of regional seismic data is that it'll take you into areas where you might have a concept of what you'd like to find, but you haven't got any data to show you uh, what sort of plays might be working there. And one of these plays is the Shavante structure, which is on the southern side of um, the Santos uh, Basin. And when we looked at our regional seismic uh, data across this region, we could uh, see that the same sedimentological system sitting under the salt extended all the way from the shore, where the big uh, discoveries in Tupay are, uh, through a whole series of structures down to the Shavante structure. And that forms a, a real cluster. That's just a huge cluster over two and a half thousand uh, square kilometers in size. The same plays that we've seen uh, in the subsalt in 
in the crete salt uh, of um, the main part of the Santos Basin extend as you go further south. And what the point of our regional data here is, and the point of any regional data, I guess, is to focus your ideas of play development into the most prospective areas, chase down um, ideas that will lead you into uh, acquiring acreage and then acquiring perhaps 3D seismic data to work up the, the prospects. And in this Chavante um, complex, we see a huge area of, um, of closure. One of the interesting things about this subsalt uh, play in Santos is that there's still, after all the drilling, after all the big discoveries that have been made in the basin, there's still a lot of debate about what the reservoir actually is. Is it a strange microbial buildup, which is uh, an, an organic type of uh, microbialite buildup, or is it purely allochemical? And this debate is still raging in, in academia. Uh, and it, at, the, at the moment, you have to look at the prospects and kind of put both models into it in order to understand the range of uncertainty. But what it could mean is that if it's an, a purely chemical model, is that the, this chemical reservoir could be found further and further and further out on the hyperextended crust that is the, the Santos Basin. Um, and so that we haven't really started to find the, the big reservoirs in this uh, particular basin. And on the regional data, as we come out from here, Jupiter on the left, we see another structure just slightly to the right of there in, in the center. So this is south east on the seismic line. And then Prospect 6, which is an enormous structure right out in the basin. Now, what we don't know is whether the source rock system is working the same way out by Prospect 6. But if it is, and if it is generating oil, and it might be, because even though the source rock is very quite deep, there's a huge section, five kilometers or so, of salt sitting on top of it, and that salt is sucking the heat out. So actually the source rock is quite cool. Even though it's very deep, it's probably generating oil, charging into prospect six. And these structures we find uh, further and further out uh, on the hyperextended crust of the Santos Basin. And I think that's the message that I'd like to leave you with uh, here is that the regional seismic data is not only taking us to new basins that we haven't explored before, but it's taking us to basins where we think we know what's going on, and it's actually showing us that the prospectivity can extend beyond our wildest dreams out into the deeper water. And this is where I really like to leave this uh, presentation with the opening statement, giant play fairways are play fairways for giants. And again, this is not just saying that these play fairways are for super majors. These are for you, giant, courageous hearted people who will take a play concept and drive out into new areas and new geologies that we've never seen before because we've never had the quality of seismic to image before and find the super basins of the future and the giant oil fields of the future. If you've liked this presentation, I'd suggest that you go and look at the EAG YouTube channel where you'll find lots more of this style. Thank you very much.